All right, we're gonna work next on the eye and the eyebrow, okay? I think we'll start with the eye. And um, one of the things that I would love for you to do is wait to fill in the eyes until you have a lot of other parts of your drawing shaded already. Um, it's pretty easy to get excited about eyes and I'm super glad if you're excited about eyes. Um, but it's also easy to get kind of lost in your drawing, just looking at the eyes and working on the eyes. And so I'd love for you to get some other areas finished first before you're really doing a lot of um, focus work on the eyes. And it's easier to concentrate on those other areas if you don't have um, beautifully shaded eyes staring back at you. Okay, I'm gonna move this down a little bit so I can reach the eye area better. And then I'm gonna just take another blank piece of paper and set over top of some of the other work that I've done on this drawing. You may find that that's helpful as well. Um, my fingers and possibly your hands will be messy as you're doing this work. And so if you are resting and moving messy hands on a part of your drawing that's already pretty well finished, that could cause smudges and smears that you will be uh, disappointed to have to erase later. So. Um, I'd encourage you to just get any kind of piece of scratch paper that's not going to make marks on your drawing and set that underneath your hand. You'll notice when you look at your photograph that you have a shine spot in your eye. Now this shine spot is a little closer to the middle of the pupil than I usually like them. Um, when I originally printed this photograph I wasn't adding shine spots where I wanted them to people's eyes, but I did add a shine spot where I wanted it to your eyes. So you will see your shine spot uh, the, either above and to the left of your pupil or above and to the right um, by your pupil. And I'd encourage you to try if you can to leave that shine spot white, or I guess our paper is off white, kind of leave that open. Um, if you can't, that's okay. Um, if you, if it's possible, you could come back and just put a little dot of white out in there later. Do not use white out anywhere else on your drawing except for that shine spot. Um, but if it's possible, it's nice to kind of leave that shine spot. So I'm going to draw the shine spot in here in a place that I like it better than where it is in this picture. The place in your picture should be fine. And then I'm going to start working on this eye at the pupil, okay? So I'm gonna fill in this pupil nice and dark. And this is a spot where you're gonna wanna be really purposeful about how your pencil moves. You'll notice I am not making very fast progress here because the goal is accuracy, not speed. Um, I also, I'm pressing with some pressure here, but I'm not trying to cave in or indent this paper too much. I want this pencil to be able to move a little bit even after I get this um, area kind of darkened in. And so um, I'm trying to be careful not to like really press and squish and squash my paper. Okay, we've got that pupil shaded now. Now this is one of my very favorite tasks for the blending stump, okay? I don't always use these a ton, even when I'm working with charcoal, which is my um, my medium of choice. I do more work with charcoal than pencil, but um, this is probably my favorite job ever for blending stumps, is to take a blending stump and go from the pupil out to the edge of the iris and just keep doing that over and over and over. What you're doing is you're just dragging some of that value from the pupil and creating some texture um, inside that iris. Now the lines that I'm making here, they're not all the same um, thickness, they're not all the same darkness, and that's great because our eyes, if you look really close in the mirror at the design of your iris, it is amazing. It's super intricate, excuse me, and we don't have time to study your iris and do exactly what, um, exactly what you see in your iris, but this provides a really nice uh, texture for us and really, um, really adds a lot of life to your eye, even just this kind of simple 
this simple process. Now doing just one round, <coughs> excuse me, of this iris work creates pretty light eye. So like if I were to leave this, the value that it is right now, it would look like this person's eye was a pretty light blue. Um, it's hard to tell from this photograph, but um, her eyes are actually a, a deeper blue, um, kind of a deeper bluish green. So I would probably want to do that same kind of thing again. Like I might want to add a little more pencil here. And you might be able to see that that's darkening the pupil anyway. And we want that pupil to be nice and dark. So that might be one of the last steps for you also is to just re-darken that pupil. Or you could always get some um, pencil from your practice paper if you've got some nice fresh pencil on there. And you can go from the inside out if you're pulling value out of the iris or if you're pulling value from somewhere else. If I'm getting pencil from somewhere else, I could always go from the outside in. That works too. I'm just gonna finish this kind of second layer around the iris here. And then, um, then we'll add a couple more details to it. Hopefully you're able to see some of the texture here. There's a couple little spots I'll need to clean up with my eraser, but this is not super dark, so that shouldn't be a big problem. All right, so we're kind of wrapping up that iris work. I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and just clean up the edge a little bit. Now, if you have light eyes, especially I should say if you have light colored eyes, um, if you have Brown eyes are especially dark, super dark brown eyes. This might not be true for you. But for some folks who have lighter eyes, lighter colored eyes, right around the edge of the iris is often just a darker ring. Um, if you've never noticed that before, you should pause this video right now and go look in the mirror and see if you notice that on your eyes. Um, that is true for her eyes. And so I'm just going to add just a, with a real light touch here with my pencil, I'm going to add that um, kind of darker edge or darker rim there on the outside of the irises. It gives a nice edge to our iris, and it also um, it also adds a level of detail. Now that edge or rim might look a little. Um, might have a little bit of texture to it right now. Um, well, it does. You may or may not be able to see it, I guess. So I'm gonna try and soften that a little bit with this blending stump. I would definitely, in the eyes, use the blending stump instead of the Q-tip because it just makes, um, you just have a lot more control over what happens with the blending stump compared to the Q-tip. Hopefully you can see the little bit of difference that that made. Um, in the detail there on the eye. So we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a little work with the upper and the lower eyelid now. If you look at the upper and lower eyelid in this photograph, there is not much darkness here to those lines. We can see where the lines are right there, but it's not very dark. Here, where her eyelashes start showing up and kind of looking like they gather, there's a much, much darker line there. And it gets a little bit darker looking down here as well. So I want to pay attention to where the darks and the lights are, even within a single edge of something, because I don't want this to look like a cartoon with a big black line all the way around her eye. I notice in that um, photograph that the tear duct area has got a little bit of shading in it. And then again, this lower edge is not very dark, so I'm just going to lightly go along that lower edge there. And then it does get a little bit darker looking um, here along the bottom of her eye um, where those eyelashes are kind of gathered. I'm going to erase a little there um, where I, my pencil got away from me a little bit. And then we'll do something similar on the top. So it's pretty light right here. 
and then it gets appears much darker along the top edge here. All right, we're going to soften that a little with our blending stump. One of the reasons I'm showing you all these tiny little steps is because I think once, if I showed you a finished eye, you might be tempted to think that you couldn't create that eye because finished things look finished <laughs> and unfinished things look unfinished. Um, but I'm hopeful that as you see just one step at a time here, um, you'll notice that there's nothing that I'm doing that you can't do. And so if you just do one little step at a time, then you'll have really um, realistic looking eyes when you're done as well. All right, I'm going to add the eye, the line above her eye. This is a little challenging to see in her photograph, but it's above her eye right there. It's that line that shows up when our eye is open. You may be able to see it kind of along there just a little bit already. I'm just going to heighten the darkness of that line a little bit and this is a decent job for my pencil um, i'm not pressing too hard and i'll soften that again with my blending stump it might not hurt i sent you a blending stump and a kneaded eraser it might not hurt to use one end of your blending stump you know if you want to push pretty hard um, it kind of smashes the end of your blending stump after a little while but that's not really a problem as long as i would suggest only you only do that with one end and then the other end can remain kind of sharp so that you can do things um, like those details with a sharper end this edge of that eyelid line looks too dark so i'm going to just lighten that lighten that up and i think that will be that will be a positive change now usually um, usually you're going to see some shading on your eye that's a dark here and usually, well, not super dark, but it's got a shadow typically in this area. And that shadow often goes from the eye all the way up to the eyebrow. So when you're doing your shading work, watch for where that shadow goes, okay? The other shadow that you will often see, and it's not super apparent on this photo, um, is on the opposite side of the eye. So there's a shadow usually here, even if it's light, it's often still there, and a shadow usually here, and it's brighter in the middle. What that does is it helps your eye to look rounded like this, like your eye socket is rounded underneath. Um, and so we're gonna do that in our drawing as well. Um, I've got a decent amount of shading over here, so I'm just gonna come in on this side and add a little bit of value on this side. And hopefully you'll be able to see how that creates some roundness there on her upper eyelid. I'm going to do the eyebrow next and the eyelashes last because I want your eyelashes to be the very last thing that you put on as well. And you can choose if you'd like to put your eyelashes on. If you see them in your photo, you'd like to include them in your drawing, great. If you see them in your photo and you'd prefer not to include them in your drawing, that's okay too. I'll show you what this looks like here right now without eyelashes. It's still pretty close to this photograph excuse me, with eyelashes. Um, but for those of you that want to include eyelashes, um, we're going to show you how that works. If this is an eye, a giant, giant eye, um, this is the tear duct, so the nose would be here, okay? The direction that our eyelashes go is very similar to the direction that our eyebrows go. You all wrote eyebrow direction and uh, made some arrows on your example drawing that you did a week and a half or so ago. And the eyelash direction is not really much different. Nearest the tear duct here, we're often seeing eyelashes that either point up or point a little to the side. And then as we move along that eyelid, 
those eyelashes are going to slowly kind of tip over, tip over, tip over, tip over until out here we often see them going sideways like pointed toward our ears. The lower eyelashes are very similar. There's not as many eyelashes along the lower, along your lower lid. Um, and the ones close to the tear duct, both on the top and the bottom, are thinner. They're not as long. They're not as dense or tightly packed. But the ones we see typically point to the side or straight down. And then as they move closer to your ear, they tip more towards your ear in a similar fashion to the ones on the top. Okay. So if I were to look at this photograph, and this is what you'll want to do. Even though I'm showing you an example here, I want you to not, well, I want you to see the example, but I don't want you to follow the example and make your eyelashes. I want you to follow your eyelashes to make your eyelashes. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so along the top here, these eyelashes are actually kind of peeking up over that eyelid just a little bit, okay? They, I'm, you're seeing me probably start here at the eyelid and then curve down a little bit and up. Um, those eyelashes are not very long. Sometimes you'll see them like actually pointing down in toward the eye. That's pretty common, um, truthfully. Um, so these are going this kind of this way and then it's, these are still going this way. I'm looking at the photograph. So the photograph is not exactly following my arrows here, but again, pay attention to your photograph. That's what you're going to want to follow. And then it's right about in here that those eyelashes appear to switch directions. And one of the reasons this line looks so dark in her photograph here is because her eyelashes, like many people's, are starting here at the eyelid, curving down and then curving up again. So they touch the eyelid here and then they cross the eyelid again. So for every eyelash, you're really, it's really going across that eyelid line a couple of times. And so that's one of the reasons that it looks so dark there because those lines are overlapping each other. All right. So you'll notice these are much thinner and they're less long and they're less um, close together, a little bit less close together. Um, and then they get a little bit longer and a little bit thicker and a little bit more dense, a little bit more close together. They do not all have to go like exactly in the same direction like that. Um, that will make them look less natural actually than if you have a, at least a couple of kind of rogue eyelashes there that are um, going in a slightly different direction. Let's add the ones here on the, on the lower lid. They're pretty similar, um, less dense, less long here. Get a little bit more dense and darker as we go along as they're kind of curving um, and angling a little bit more toward that ear. Hopefully this is pretty easy to see. Um, you may not be able to see the exact eyelashes quite as well in my picture here, but I'm going to try and follow follow those eyelashes here as I put them on um, put them on her eye. Again, you're going to want to look at your photo to see what are your eyelashes doing, and this should be probably the very, very, very last thing you add um, to your entire drawing. And I, Mrs. Snyder, would like to see your drawing before this at least a couple times. So if there's some things I want you to um, add or adjust, you can get that accomplished and not have to worry about smearing eyelashes because that's really a challenging thing to fix. All right, we're going to add her lower eyelashes here too. Not much going on right away, or at least not that we can see in this picture, but then they, there's a few more here on the outside. All right, I'm going to move that extra paper. And we have um, a 
pretty accurate, pretty nice drawing here of our, at least our kind of four boxes here, a little bit of shading. I won't take time to shade that other eyebrow because I want you to have time to do your work as well. Um, oh, we need an eyebrow. Sorry about that. Okay. One last thing. We're going to put an eyebrow on here. So the eyebrow has kind of three basic steps. At least when I draw them. You can try it differently if you'd like to. Um, and you've got some practice paper. So if you want to try it on practice paper before you try it on your actual drawing, that's fine too. Um, these, are my th these are my three favorite steps for eyebrows. Okay. The first one is to use your finger. Or you might be able to get away with using a Kleenex if you're pretty accurate with your Kleenex work. Use your finger to put some value in that eyebrow, okay? And I'm not sure if you can tell this or not, but I'm trying to move my hand in the same direction that those eyebrow hairs would be going. So we're just kind of getting some light or medium value in, those eye, in that eyebrow, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the next step is to take your kneaded eraser and squish it so that it makes this kind of a shape. Okay, so there's a curve here, but it's not very wide. Okay, hopefully you can see that it's like a flat curve. This is probably my favorite step. With that flat curve, you're going to do little eyebrow hairs. Okay, so I'm going to take that kneaded eraser. If it starts getting too wide, making marks that are too wide, just squish it back together and make yourself a new curve that's nice and nice and narrow there. So it's creating um, creating nice, thin, hair-looking lines for you. Okay, do you see the texture that creates in that eyebrow? I just love that. All right, and then you'll come back with your pencil and do a little bit of the opposite texture. So we just added light texture, and now we're going to add dark texture, so we're still paying attention to the texture, direction um, of these eyebrow hairs, and we're adding those. This um, gets a little bit darker towards the edge here, so I'm trying to capture that and get that eyebrow a little bit darker there towards the edge, and we have a girl with an eyebrow. 